Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser and we are modelling for advantage. So today we are going to have a look at the Desert Rat Squadron, the latest uh, box for British Late War Flames of War. This army is actually going to be for Johnny B. But because of the lockdown situation, John's not here to it today with me. We're not allowed to sit in the same room or whatever, obviously. Uh, but here's a word from Johnny B about his hopes for this set. Hey, folks. Um, as you may or may not know, this year we're going a bit partisan with our Flames of War armies. And as I play predominantly British in bolt action, I'm going to be doing some British for Flames of War. Uh, these are going to be painted up for the European fields of battle and uh, the best thing is I don't even have to paint them It's all Kaiser. Cheers, buddy. Anyway, go and waffle on about whatever you're waffling on about All right, let's crack the fella open There is a lot of stuff in here I love these box sets they have gone up in price. Oh, lost a bit. They have gone up in price a little bit. Uh, they've gone up to £80 UK. If you want one of these, you can buy one from us. Uh, link is in the description. It's £80 retail, but we will cover the shipping costs for you. So according to the box, we are going to get five Cromwell tanks, two Fireflies, three Crocodile tanks, four Stuarts, a Paratrooper platoon, Universal Carriers, uh, four 25 pounders, two M10 tank destroyers, a rule book, a start here booklet, some decal sheets, and 17 unit cards. Now, what's interesting about this set is not only um, are the models that slightly different from the previous one was all about the Shermans, this about the Cromwells, but actually the stats on the units are a little bit different because these represent veterans. So we'll go through those cards uh, as we get to them. But to look at the other kind of bits of bombs that you get in here, you get your rule book and you get your sweet, sweet decal sheets. Uh, this has got late war British support markers from the outside. I'm thinking that there's going to be more than one sheet in here because uh, that looks like Royal Tank Regiment stuff rather than for the crocodiles. Yeah, there we go. We've got the two different ones. So the, the mainline brigades have these red ones and these other ones are things like artillery and Royal Tank Regiment infantry tanks and so forth. There are some crocodiles in here, so it does make sense that you get that uh, the two different decal sheets there which is nice. We get our Flames of War rule book. They've put it in a little baggie, and I'm glad they do that, because as you can see from this bag, it does get damaged from all this plastic being shoved in here. You also get the British Start Here booklet for the British Start Force Desert Rats. These are great little inclusions, because they give you the assembly instructions and the unit cards. Now, they're not all of the possible variants that you could build with these kits. These kits are often quite uh, flexible. For example, the M10 kit will build an M10. It will build uh, the British 17 pounder. I think is that the Achilles? Uh, and it will also build the M36 Jackson. So first up, the Cromwell. So this is the same tank that you actually get in the World of Tanks, the miniatures game uh, expansion, which is, and they've built it up in its basic arrangement. But in here, you've got a nice, simple looking construction. Obviously, I haven't built one yet because I've only just opened this box. Um, but you seem to have a, ver a howitzer version uh, and a six panning. Maybe that there's a 75 mil. No, there's a close support 75, uh, 95 mil howitzer on the card I can see here. So those will be what those two different guns are. You've got a little bit of stowage and the lower hole is keyed with different keying points so that the tracks and the running gear, you can't put them on the wrong way around. Um, which, I, you know, I know pro tank vets couldn't imagine doing that, but I really struggle with that, particularly because there's no consistency on where the drive wheel is. Um, some some tanks it's on the back and some tanks it's on the front. Um, and although nations follow broad principles, again, they seem to sometimes, to me, it seems that they have odd ones that have them at the other end, like they've been testing it or something. I don't know. But this is a really nice, simple looking kit, probably 10, 15 parts maximum to put them together. And that's what you want from a wargaming kit. I want some options, but I don't want too many. I don't want millions of pieces. As to the unit cards, so this box is in is expecting you to take a Desert Rats Armoured Squadron, which you can have four or three tanks in the HQ, 
um, and it's just whether you the one and two options are just with the 75 and the three tank versions and the four tank versions just increase the number of support tanks those CS or close support tanks have the howitzers in the formation you have to have one of the HQ cards which we'll go through in a moment you have to have one to three Cromwell armored troops and another one which is either a Cromwell or a Stuart uh, recce patrol and in each case these are using the desert rat stack cards and then you can have an additional Stuart recce patrol and potentially an additional crusader AAA tank which is nice so the Cromwell itself then it has got a tactical move of 12 which is nice it's fast uh, it's got a 75 mil gun with a 28 inch range halted to moving one anti-tank power 10 fire power three up and the option to fire smoke whereas the 95 mil cs the howitzer version is a 48 inch range um, as artillery with three anti-tank power the direct fire roll for that 95 mil has only got a 24 inch range and a fire power a rate of fire of one but it's got an eight anti-tank a two up firepower and a brutal gun with the slow firing roll which means it's going to be really useful for digging out infantry in terms of the desert rats then oh sorry armor rating six on the front four on the side and one on the top this is not an armored vehicle you're paying for that tactical move and the cross is three up because it's not a heavy tank the way the stats are quite different from other British regiments though is these guys are veterans and what we know about veterans is they may have been good and they may have been bad but what we know for sure is they survived the last battle and the stats on these guys reflect that their motivation is reluctant they have fought the Germans before they are not going to do things that are reckless but they're not stupid they have cautious not stupid which gives them a three plus remount role so it's more about getting in close at the motivation role that has close assault stuff they're not really up for that to the same degree but I think in, in exchange for that is they're a little bit cheaper per unit so let's have a look at the armored desert rats armored troop itself and you get two of these cards so 18 points would get you uh, three Cromwells and a Firefly, which is the standard paper strength formation size for a British tank troop in the late war. Again, you've got that reluctant five plus, but cautious, not stupid, trained and hit on fours because they're careful. Same armor, same gun with a halted rate of fire of two, moving one, 10 anti-tank power, three firepower. Brilliant really good little tank um, and the 17 pounder option is just going to give you that bigger gun if you come up against the harder targets speaking of the firefly you get two of those in here um, so allowing you potentially to have that that um, second troop although as I come to think about it in the Cromwells you can take them as two Cromwells and one firefly so you can use all five Cromwells the two fireflies and get yourself a legal formation here that's worth knowing the firefly is bringing that gun tank with that heavy hitting power that you're going to need against some late war German tanks Panthers etc the 17 pounder has got a 36 inch range halted rate fire of two 14 anti-tank power and three up firepower again it's only got the six front armor and the four rear armor and side armor one on the top and it's reluctant and cautious not stupid just like the others but it's putting within each troop some real combat power people who are quite gamey about it probably want to take the minimum number of crusaders per firefly me i like to feel historical formations if the game allows it um, and the points are not too prohibitive next up we've got the stewart uh, which is another formation which you can use within the the desert rots armored squadron um into indeed even replacing one of the compulsory Cromwell so you can take these as threes or fours for six or eight points so pretty cheap they've got that tactical move of 12 same stats before because they're a scout though they have an assault rating that's even worse it goes up to four a front armor is only four side and rear is three and the 37 mil gun has only got a 24 inch range rate of fire two and one seven anti-tank power and it even has the overworks rule so you're not taking these to have a lot of combat power it does however have a rate of fire of four with its machine guns you know and each tank is still one shot 
to kill minimum. I think sometimes when you come up against these really powerful lists with a lot of tigers or panthers or really heavy vehicles, sometimes you just need some numbers, especially numbers that can move quite fast, and these can do that. In terms of the sprue, this is one that we've seen before. It is the 2019 Stuart. So it's not the Stuart Honey, the Desert War one. It's got a slightly different upper deck and it does have options to have, is it the M8 Scott? which is like a howitzer version. So yeah, you can build this, uh, the, the short howitzer version. We've got two different turret options here. Um, and I think it's the M8 Scott. I'm not sure they were in British service, but again, it's them, they reuse the sprues for a lot of different purposes. So that's the Stuarts. Very nice. Um, the Universal Carrier Patrol is, is really just about having a very, very cheap unit on the table. You get three of these in here. It's the same sprue that we've seen in the desert. Um, they've got a Pintle Mountain machine gun on here and a Vickers. Uh, a, is that a Bren gun? Yeah, so there's, there's several different weapon options on here, but none of it really matters. It's two points for three of them, uh, but they do have the spearhead rule. So it's just a really cheap way of getting some um, more bodies on the table and expanding your deployment zone. You can add a Pia anti-tank gun on any of these for an additional point. And the Pia anti-tank has actually got an anti-tank rating of 10. That's pretty generous. Uh, and a moving rate of fire of one. So you could potentially skidoosh these guys right forwards in the hope of taking something out. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It does have the slow firing rule at least, so there are some limitations. Um, these come with resin crew figures. Um, at the moment, Battlefront is going through a transition where it's different materials, and often you find with things like vehicle crews, some you get plastic, some you get resin, some you get metal, some you get this new thermoplastic. So I, the, I've got resin resin ones in here. I can't guarantee it'll be the same when you get to it. But that's the Universal Carrier Patrol. So that's been taken as a support option here. Uh, it's nice. Um, if you buy, these are, the crew are slightly different. If you buy the desert version of the Universal Carrier Patrol, you do get slightly different crew. I just think they've got rolled up sleeves or something. But yeah, nice little kit there. Another thing that you get with these, if you're not using the Carrier Patrol, is you get the Universal Carrier OP. It's a single point as a forward observer to use with a battery of artillery. If from this kit you use that, you're going to forfeit the ability to take their patrol, but it's an alternative um, if you don't necessarily want that, because having an observer for your artillery is really quite useful sometimes. On the support options then, you get the option to have uh, M10 self-propelled anti-tank troop. This is not Desert Rat specific, so this is a support option, and you can build it either with the three inch at uh, eight points for the pair, or you can build it with a 17 pounder at nine points for the pair. Uh, the three inch has got 12 anti-tank power, no HE, and the 17 pounder's got 14 anti-tank power. I think if this force needs anything out of these, it's the 17 pounders, and it's just another way of getting a few on the table. I'm not sure though, at nine points, this will be quite fragile from a morale perspective. As soon as one goes, the other one might just leave. Um, and it's only got a, a motivation rate of four plus, not protective ammo or any of that. So it's 50-50, not one out, it might go. Um, but yeah, this is a great little kit. It's been out for a while and it'll build you, as I mentioned before, you've got the turret for the M36, you've got the M10, and you can actually build the two completely different turrets uh, because they use slightly different pieces. You even get a pair of turret pegs. So this is remarkably generous, I think, of them because normally when you get a sprue that will build multiple different unit types is they're quite stingy about things like turret pegs. They try and make certain components which they only provide one of. I'm not saying this is a battlefront thing, I'm saying manufacturers in general, there'll be some some component that prevents you from making two separate turrets for the same vehicle. Um, and something like the turret peg would be a really easy way of doing that. But they're actually quite, as a design choice, they're saying, no, 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 you can feel this as both. Brilliant, love it for that. We're, we're only just over halfway going through all the stuff. You get your Churchills, and there's three different Churchill cards in here, and that's not all of the possible Churchill options you could get, but that's certainly the ones that they're provided. You got the AVRE Churchill, Armored Vehicle Royal Engineers with a petard motor. We have the Crocodile, which is the flame tank, and this is the new kit, and we have just the regular Churchill.
It's great about the back of the regular Churchill card is it's got photographs showing you how the different turrets represent the different tanks. So this particular Churchill kit is new. There's other Churchill kits um, which came out with the Russians in the mid-war um, which will allow you to build like the six pounder Churchills and so forth but this it, of noticeable is you've got the this Bowser for the flamethrower. So let's have a look at the um, crocodile. So the Churchill crocodile uh, as a section is 14 points for a pair or 21 points for three. That is a lot of points but it is a lot of combat power with a lot of armor. It's careful so it's hit on a four. Its motivation is confident but it's got the flame tank counter attack rating of six and protected ammo so it's got three plus remount. Great. It's trained for four plus on skill but again, it's got an assault rating of six. That's not really what they're for. It's interesting, isn't it? Because then this is a vehicle for assault purposes, but not necessarily what Flames of War has as its close assault rules. Um, it's supposed to move up in flame, not literally overrun. So the weapon systems, oh, sorry, the armor. I forgot to mention the armor. Gosh, that's what the Churchill's all about, right? Front armor, 11, side armor, eight this thing is not being penetrated by anything that isn't a serious anti-tank weapon which is why it's so expensive it's got a tactical move of eight not the more traditional 10 but you know this thing is still just about grinding forwards and murdering that which is in front of it taking the flamethrower it's not even taking out your main armament it's actually run through the length of the tank i think rather than externally um, and it comes out of roughly where the machine gun was so you still have the 75 mil main gun which has got firepower and anti-tank rating of 10 and two shots halted firepower three still a decent gun it's not brilliant but it's, it will do something 28 inch range but the flamethrower is really why you take this halted rate of fire of six moving rate of fire of six automatic fire power success but only an anti tank rating of two and only a six inch range the flamethrower rule infantry gun and unarmored tank teams re-roll saves armored tank teams use top armor for saves unit is pinned down if hit when this thing fires it does stuff three of those 21 points pretty solid Look at the other two options then your vanilla Churchill got the 75 mil and the six pounder options they're not particularly exciting you know um, there are a lot of points for what they do I think 18 points for three of them uh, compared to what was this 21 points this is basically the same tank but with a flamethrower built in worth the extra point per tank but the AVRE then the um, armored vehicle Royal Engineers with a petard mortar Interestingly, this one has less armor. This has only got nine on the front. Maybe that's something that they had to do to reduce the weight. But the petard mortar uh, has got a range of six inches, but is artillery. I don't know if that's correct, but it might be. This thing was designed as a bunker buster, which is why it's um, um, Royal Engineers. And tank power is only one, but again, firepower is auto it's got different stats because again it's a, an assault tank so it's got the protected ammo rather than the basic confident for motivation and it's got a counter attack of five and an assault of five so it's better but not great it crosses on a two i think their cross things have got a lot to do with weight it's also got brutal bunker killer and petard as special rules the brutal rule we know infantry uh, have to reroll saves uh, bunker killer. Bunker killer teams hit nests and bunker teams despite being an artillery bombardment. So they change the way that artillery interacts with bunkers and nests. Great. Petard. Units in this team may spot and fire bombardments even if they moved. AVRE do not need to re-roll successful hit rolls to hit for only having one or two weapons fire. They fire a bombardment and ignore the danger close rule. So basically that, that, that's a series of rules that say the way that artillery works in Flames of War has got certain restrictions to it. 
these guys don't really suffer from those penalties from being a small battery from being very close to what they find because of very short range man it's an interesting thing this petard mortar it is a dustbin chucker but i think the dude has got to get out of the tank to reload it and i think it's multi-part ammunition that's really big i don't know I don't know how well these actually function, to be honest. I think it's like shoot once and then retreat. But what you shot at should be destroyed. But it's a cool model. Um, it's a cool vehicle. I'm just wondering if it is actually on here, the dustbin chucker. Oh, yeah. I think that's probably it there. Just a massive mortar. Very nice. So that's dealt with all of the vehicles, but not quite all of the sprues. We have got our ubiquitous 25 pounder artillery, uh, which you've probably seen. It comes in just about every British kit I've ever seen. These come in twos or fours for seven or 14 points. Uh, they have a direct fire option with a halted rate of fire of one. 24 inch range uh, and an anti-tank power of nine. You're not gonna knock out mainline battle tanks with this, but if they are being assaulted by light tanks, they can actually shoot them down. It's a great vehicle and it comes with the uh, munition trailer uh, or limber. What it doesn't come with though, is that I think it was the Morris that built the tractor. The, the, the kind of whole thing is like a, a, a weapon system right down to the, the plate that the gun sits on that allows it to traverse it's kind of screwed into position i think and it turns on the wheels so that these bits grip into the ground and it sits on this turntable um so it takes a bit of time to set up but it was a weapon system that was designed with the gun the limber and the toe all designed at the same time all designed to work with each other you can build three different versions you've got the early and you've got the late and then you've got the um 17 pounder that was put on this carriage in the mid war sort of 43 as the 17 pounds coming into service they don't have a unique carriage they bonged it on one of these temporarily it might have seen service in italy it definitely did in the desert i don't think it did in europe but loads of options great little kit last thing to talk about in here then is the infantry we've mentioned the commander sprues you've got more, as many commander sprues nearly as vehicles I know why you've got so many now. It's for your um, tank destroyers. Those M10s have got an open crew compartment, so you can pop these guys in. That's why they've given you so many. Artillery crew, we mentioned before, you have got enough to crew eight guns here. I don't know whether ostensibly, like some are paratroopers and some are not, but these guys look identical to me. There may be some really subtle differences, but I'm not seeing them. These are made of their new thermoplastic. It is pretty hard, and the detail on it is nice when you've painted them, but they do tend to look a little bit blurry sometimes. But I think that's more about how the light interacts with the plastic. When you get some paint on them, they do tend to look all right. So last but by no means least, we get the infantry. And the infantry in here are an interesting choice because the infantry, they're not British riflemen, they are British paratroopers. And I think that's just a reflection of the fact that they wanted to put some new stuff in the box. What paratroopers are doing hanging around with um, 7th Armoured Brigade in Northern Europe. I don't know, were they involved in Market Garden? I just think it was like, this is some new stuff to go in the box. These are made of the new thermoplastics for sure. Um, and they're, they're, they're funny. I don't really know yet what to make of them. Um, Battlefront made lots of different types of, types of infantry over the past couple of years. Um, definitely I prefer the hard plastic stuff on sprue. Um, this stuff, it seems okay but there seems to be some quality control issues. I mean, just looking at this one, you can see right down to the, the writing on the sprue here, it's all blobbed in. You know, it just doesn't, it doesn't look clean and crisp uh, in, in the detail. Where the detail is there, it's great, but sometimes it looks like it's, it's kind of blobbed up a little bit. Really need to paint these though uh, to see that, because I think, as I said with the artillery crew, I think some of it's about how the light interacts with the plastic, and it just doesn't look like what I expect it to look like in the normal hard plastic sprues. So I'm kind of a bit biased against it. We will see. The paratroopers, most of them have got helmets on because they're serious and sensible soldiers, but some of them are just in their berries because they're cool Rambo men. You obviously you get all the bases that you would expect and you do have 
a few last thing other unit cards and what are they they're the option to take some of the elements in here not as desert rats and you might do that because you want to um you're taking them as support options so you can take the stewards as a support option and it gives you the alternative stats and the alternative points and your parachute brigade i should have mentioned you can take as either a parachute platoon or an air landing platoon the models are not different the stats are not different at all um, some of them dropped with parachutes some of them dropped with gliders and the unit composition the air landing platoon comes with a two inch mortar the parachute platoon does not that seems to be the only difference this has got an extra rifle team whereas this has got a two inch mortar integral to it and they're both 10 or 8 points and you can take an extra PIA in each case it's a great kit um, there's lots and lots of stuff in here you're paying less than four pound per, uh, per vehicle um, or infantry platoon it's really good value um, and a lot of good models I'm not sure that there's anything in here I don't want that's not true it's not that I don't want them but they provided four 24 pounders in just about every British set that they've ever done so I've got loads and loads of these now um, it's a great kit and it, the British did use lots and lots of artillery but I'm not sure I need this much that's it from me. If you want to support the channel, as I've mentioned, you can buy one of these sets or some other sets from us. Link in the what's it. And in the meantime, thank you for watching. If, like us, you enjoy Battlefront's games, Flames of War and Team Yankee, one of the best ways you can support the channel is to buy some of their crap from us. Check out our website, modelingforadvantage.co.uk. All profits, which are quite small, go towards supporting the YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.